Hey everybody, this week we're gonna look at how to go from something like this to something like this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, as always, subscribe down below, hit the notifications, you know the drill. This week's video is pretty straightforward. What we're gonna be doing is going through a complete step-by-step -step process and building out one of these PCB boards. Now you can get these PCB boards from different places online, Aeon, Pedal PCB, really well. Just so happens I have another Pedal PCB one here. This is the Delegate Compressor. It's a compressor effects board, and it is a clone of the EQD Warden or the Earthquaker Devices Warden. We're not gonna get into a demo or a review of this actual build once we get done it. This week, I just wanna take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to get from something like this to something like this. So most of today's video is gonna be down at the workbench just going through the build and the step-by-step -step process, but just the few things I have here that I should say, of course, the effects board from Pedal PCB. I also have this other board here from Pedal PCB, which is a three-pole double-throw true bypass pinout board. This is very useful. Um, I use them in all my builds pretty much where applicable, and yeah, great for uh, quickening the process on some of the off-board wiring. Lastly, I have my 125B case that came pre-drilled from Tata Electronics. Tata and Pedal PCB actually have a little bit of a partnership in that you can actually go on Tata, say you're doing a Pedal PCB build, search the build you're looking for, and actually buy the, the pre-drilled case for it. Um, one caveat, just because of some of the components I use, I did have to expand the size of the LED holder uh, hole and also my DC supply hole. Uh, just simple stuff on the, the drill press, nothing crazy there. As you can see, I also have my uh, graphics on this case. Um, if you wanna see how I did the graphics, I will link a video I did, I think about a year and a half ago, uh, up top or down below or wherever, and you can see how that's done. So with that, I think we better go down to the workbench, and I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step just the process of building out one of these effects boards. So we're down at the workbench now. I've brought the case down as well. Uh, one thing that I uh, didn't mention is I did do a quick clear coat on this um, just to cover up the, the sticker that essentially I put on there. That just helps from uh, any, of the, uh, any of the ink kind of smudging off as I use this pedal. So we have our two boards as well. And as you can see, I've set up my workstation. Uh, I have these guys here. Uh, just cardboard that I kind of accordion style bent and that's what I use to sort out my resistors when I, uh, I'm building a pedal. I've uh, got my capacitors here as well. If I just throw the capacitors on, you can see that uh, we should have room for all those as well. Uh, along with the capacitors and the resistors, just some other items that we're going to need for our build. Uh, some three millimeter red diodes, uh, some heat shrink. You'll see why we're using this in a bit. Uh, five millimeter white diodes, uh, OPA2134 uh, chip, IC, some 2N5089s, the transistors, MPSA18 transistors, uh, some LDRs or uh, light dependent resistors. And then just a mishmash of other stuff there. You can see my three-pole double throw switch, uh, some audio jacks, some knobs, power supply, stuff like that. Um, other than that, yeah, some wire, edge cutters, screwdrivers, wire cutters. Uh, see here. And then uh, back to the components, we also have our PCB mount uh, potentiometers. Uh, for this build, I'll also be using just uh, some regular flux. This is 0.8 millimeter, 60, 40 flux, I think. So let's uh, let my soldering iron heat up and we'll get started. So what we want to start with here is our resistors. So you always want to start with your uh, lowest lying components. In this case, in most cases, it's going to be your resistors and then obviously uh, some diodes as well. Um, but yeah, let's get started with resistors. So pretty simple process, 10K resistors in this case, these are all marked on the PCB. I'm gonna seed a few of them and then go ahead and solder them all.
So there is our finished board with resistors. So now we got to move on to diodes. So we got our diodes here, 1N4001s, 1N4148s, and the other ones are 1N5817s. So let's throw these in next. Same way as your resistors. Diodes are in now. So the next lowest thing is not the capacitors, even though some people might think that. It's actually my sockets for my ICs. So I'm gonna put those in next. And the easiest way to put those in is you kind of get a little bit of solder on your soldering iron and tack one leg down like this. And I'll do that with the other one as well. And then now just go back over each of the eight legs to make sure they're all soldered in there tightly. And you want to go back over the one that you just tacked on there as well because sometimes that is a cold solder joint. But get a few legs down first before you go ahead with that. So now let's start with our non-electrolytic capacitors. So our box capacitors, and these are 22s, 22 nanos. Let's put these in and just give them a little bend on the other side to hold them in. 22 up here as well. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and put in the electrolytic capacitors. Okay, now we need to put on our transistors. So for the transistors, we have two 2N5089s which uh, we'll do here. And then we have one MPSA-18. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is something a little bit interesting is uh, put in this LDR and diode. So uh, that's what we need our heat shrink for. So you can see I got some heat shrink and let's find our LDR and our five millimeter white diode. So the way we want to do this is we want to enclose these two guys together like this, kind of head on head uh, in some shrink tubing. So I'm going to just cut this to size we'll say maybe about here. So I just got a small piece here. I'm gonna make sure that those leads don't touch. So I'm gonna try to separate them out as much as possible. So. I get it in there, get them kind of touching. And then the way to do this is just use your soldering iron on your heat shrink. Just kind of go around it. Make sure you get one side kind of in. And then again, just double check that your resistor is in there. Just want to make sure they stay head on head. And 
and kind of once you get it in there tight just kind of go over it all and let that melt around the two components so there we are there's our opto isolator essentially now what we need to do is seed this in there correctly we're going to do that next Okay, so now we have our LED and LDR in there. Uh, next thing is uh, we can either do the diode, the on-off diode, or we can do the transistors. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go with the on-off diode. So let me just uh, get that out of here. So what we want to do, I have just these little spacers for the legs. And you just... Uh, Feed your LED down in there. Push that up tight. And then this is actually going to go on the opposite side. So what we're going to do is uh, just going to tack one side in right now just to kind of keep it there. Okay, I'm just going to bend this out of the way for now. Let's go on with the resistors. And the easiest way to do the resistors is to use your case. Uh, first thing we need to do is cut off all the little tabs on the uh, potentiometers. I've been saying resistors, but potentiometers. So let's take off the screws and the washers, and we'll cut off those tabs just like this. And we have to do that for all of them, so let's just quickly zoom through those. Okay. So we don't want to scratch up our case, but what we want to do is just align these. And remember, your board's going to flip over, so you need to swap your right side for your left side here. So in this case, uh, what I would do is actually take my board... I need to put a 10K, 100K, and 50K in that order. So I have a 100K in my hand. So that's going to go in the middle. And then a 10K. Uh, this is a C, 1K. We'll leave that for now. Uh, 10K, 50K goes here. And this is a 10K. I'm just reading the markers on the PCB. So we have those three in there. And then holding those in, let's look at the other three. Uh, 50, 100, and C, 1 mag. So 50, 100, and C, 1 mag. Fifty, one hundred, and C, 1 mag. Double check everything. Okay, and then what I do is I just take my case and I use that to kind of make sure everything is seated properly. Just make sure everything is down flat. Let's solder it up. Okay. So now you can see everything lines up. Might have to push a few just because whatever, but everything lines up with those guys there. So now what we need to do, uh, everything on the board is complete. Uh, I haven't soldered both of the leads for the LED 
yet, but that comes a little bit later. I haven't put in my two ICs yet. That comes a little bit later. No worries. Uh, now what we need to do is start populating this box here. And the first thing we want to do is put in our little LED holder. And that just goes in there like this. And this is just one of those ones that I like to use. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit. My needle nose pliers. So that's in there. We want to put our um, switch in there. So what we need is our switch. And we also need to solder to the switch. our pinout board. Okay. And you can see that that's gonna fit in there like that. We wanna attach the two boards uh, just through the four, there's, five, there's six um, eyelets here. We want to do is attach the middle four to the four off of the PCB board or the effects board from pedal PCB. So we're going to do that with just some uh, pieces of wire. I think sometimes they line up that you can use um, pins, but I don't think they're going to do it in this case. So let's, uh, let's just cut some pieces of wire and we'll do it that way. Okay, now we just want to make sure that the switch and the LED line up with the holders when we get the potentiometer seated in there. So it's a little bit tricky with the LED. You kind of got to eyeball it and then hope everything lines up. Okay, so it looks like I have my LEDs kind of in the spot. I do need to lengthen the leads on that, or sorry, uh, reduce the length of the leads on that. So where I only put one of the, uh, soldered one of the leads, the cathode in this case. Diodes are in there, cutting the lead off, and let's see if everything lines up. I think we're good. So we'll get this uh, all screwed in and then we'll get back at the uh, at uh, putting in the audio jacks and the power supply and then we'll put it all together and we'll be done. So the next trick is to get the DC supply in there. I've got my jack and what I'm actually going to do is pre-wire the jack, and you'll see why here in a reason. I'm just going to cut myself a couple of lengths of black and red wire. I can find the ends. OK, 
Okay, so the way this works is I've got to try to feed this guy in. And what I do is I put the nut on this side. It's a little bit tricky to see here. But essentially thread that nut over the leads. And I believe to get this to sit properly. So it's in there like that, and then I just gotta screw in this nut over the DC supply. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Once you get it going, it goes in there. And then I usually just use some needle nose pliers to give it a couple extra cranks, just so it doesn't rotate. But we're in there now. And now we need to feed these leads over to the board and they actually cross over. And the easiest way to do that is just give it a little bit of a bend and use some needle nose pliers. And usually you can get them up in there. So now we have our supply in there. Okay, so we're in, we can cut those leads off. Okay, and then we need to throw in our audio jacks and that'll be the last wiring that we need to do. So I've got my two uh, audio jacks, they need to go in here. Should be a pretty easy thing. The best way to start this is to actually get your ground uh, leads in first. So I'm just gonna attempt to do that. Okay, and now we can screw these guys in. Run these wires along the side and we'll uh, solder these last two pieces in. And there we go. So now what we need to do is put in our two ICs. One of which is this guy here, which is our charge pump IC. Just putting in that last uh, chip. This is an OPA 2134PA. And that goes down here. I should mention we need to do, we need to put on knobs as well. So let's get three more of those out. And I have my small flathead screwdriver turning all the volumes or all the levels down on all these. And it's easiest to start with the bottom and about there looks good. Yeah, they're pretty close.
So just one last check that we can do just to make sure. I'm not going to run this through the full test on the guitar uh, because you know, it might take a little bit longer than I really want to. But essentially we just want to make sure we get that LED coming on and off. That's usually the first check that I do just to ensure that uh, all the uh, at least true bypass stuff with the LED seems to be working. And normally what I'll do is I'll set those to 50% for when I connect this to the guitar the first time. Worst thing you can ever do, I find, is if you have your level all the way down, you plug it into your guitar, and then the next thing you know, uh, you're panicking a little bit, and then you just realize that your level's down. So, um, yeah, here we are. That's pretty much it for building out one of these. Uh, I'm going to do a demo on this, uh, maybe in an upcoming video. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the... Uh, Delegate Compressor DIY PCB effects build. So back up in the main room with the Delegate Compressor. It's completely done now. Again, like I said, we're gonna wait and do a full review of the Delegate Compressor by Pedal PCB in another video. This one was really all about what it took to build it. I also didn't go into a lot of the troubleshooting thereafter. Uh, I will tell you that the pedal does work. I know I showed just kind of the on off with the diodes, but I have plugged it in. Uh, it does work. I wanna save kind of the sound of this for the review of the pedal. Um, other than that, not a lot of other things to say. The build time on this one was a little bit longer than I would have liked. I think probably doing the video added a little bit of time to it, but it was about an hour and 15 to an hour and a half. Um, that's not including the setup either. So. A little bit longer than normal, but still pretty quick time to put one of these pedals together. With that, we'll end it here for the week. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.